If you ask how to install Windows 10 using VirtualBox, you probably need to run Windows-specific software in Linux or Mac. In this video, you will learn how to install Windows 10 in VirtualBox and how to make this Windows guest system completely functional, including full screen mode, shared clipboard, shared folder, and other useful features that integrate virtual environment and your main system. Let's get started. To install Windows 10 in VirtualBox, you will need VirtualBox installed on your system. If you use Linux, VirtualBox is available in the software centers of most distributions. If you use macOS or you want to have the latest VirtualBox on your Linux system, you can go to the website virtualbox.org and download VirtualBox from here. This is how VirtualBox looks. I won't go into details about the interface of this program, it is pretty intuitive. Here on the left you have all the systems which you install in virtual environment within the initial box, and on the right you have information about these systems. To install Windows 10, you need to create a new virtual environment. You click New and give it a name Windows 10, and VirtualBox will automatically define the system you need. If it didn't define it, you can select it manually from here. Then you click Next, here you define how much RAM you can allocate to this virtual machine. 2GB is usually fine, but for Windows it's probably better to give free. Click Next. At this step we need to create a virtual hard drive, and the recommended size is 50 gigs. So let's proceed with the 50 gigs. You have different options here, but I recommend you also to proceed with VirtualBox disk image, and select it dynamically allocated, so it will not use extra space on your system. Here you can change the location of this virtual disk. That's what I'm going to do, because I store all my virtual hard drives in a separate hard drive. And click Create. So the virtual environment for Windows 10 has been created. But there are a few settings you need to adjust to make this system work as smooth as possible. Here in the system settings I usually disable floppy and move it down in the boot order. Next you also need to enable EFI because Windows 10 uses EFI boot system, and you can also set hardware clock to UTS time. In the next step, I also recommend to allocate more than one CPU to your system. In my system I have four cores, so I will allocate two cores to this Windows system. If you want to get as much power as possible from your Windows system, you can also enable this feature and allocate more cores. Next go to the display tab, and here enable 3D and 2D acceleration. If you have a dedicated graphical video card, you can also allocate more video memory, but I will keep it at default. Next go to the storage, and here click on the empty disk. Then click on this disk icon, and select the ISO image of your Windows 10. If you don't have Windows 10 ISO, you can go to the Microsoft website and download it. I leave a link to this page in the description. Here you select which Windows version you want to use, then you select language, and download either 64 or 32 bits. I recommend you to download the 64 bit version. And select save. The ISO image size is 4.6 GB, so it will take some time to download. After you attach your Windows 10 ISO to this virtual environment, click OK and then launch the system. You need to press any key during the boot. Select Capture here, so your cursor will be captured in this virtual environment. Then adjust these settings according to your preferences and click Next. The rest of the installation is pretty standard, if you have ever installed Windows. Here you can provide your license key, if you don't have a license key, you can skip it for now and use Windows in a trial mode. Select version of your Windows, I will go with Windows 10 Pro. Accept the license. There are no any other systems installed on this virtual hard drive because we have just created it, so we will select install Windows only. Select free space here and click next. Windows will automatically partition this hard drive and install everything for yourself. I will speed up the installation part to save your time.
after the installation process has finished, the system will automatically restart. The first boot is pretty long because Windows is installing some programs as it always does during the restarts, so I will speed up this part too. Next you select your region, keyboard layout, you can also add a second keyboard layout, I will skip it. This Windows 10 installer needs to do some additional settings for you, luckily I will speed up this part too. Select how are you going to use this system, for me it is personal use. You can skip an account, provide your name, password, confirm password, then you need to set three security questions, I will quickly skip this part. Well, if you use multiple devices you can connect them here, I will skip it. I don't need any digital assistance, so I will decline Cortana here. And I usually prefer to disable all these options here, because I don't need any tracking and advertising. Accept. Well, yeah, it says it will take several minutes, but my impression that Windows 10 installation takes ages. If it were Linux, it would have been installed already. But don't worry, I will speed up it again. Yeah, I like this message, leave everything to us. This is not what a Linux user probably would like to do. Well, the installation is complete, and here is our Windows system, but as you can see, there is one problem. This Windows screen is too small, and it is not adapted to your screen size. So we need to correct that and also enable some additional features. To do that, you need to go to the menu of your virtual machine and select here in the Devices menu Insert Guest Edition CD Image. After you have done so, open the file manager of the Windows system, go to this PC, and here you should see Virtual Guest Edition CD drive. Enter it and install this VirtualBox Windows Editions. If you use 64 bit, select this one, or if you use 32 bit system, select this one. I am running 64 bit system here. Allow this application and install it. You can keep everything at default here. Install. You may see some screen blinking during the installation. This is normal, just wait. And when the installation is complete, reboot the system. Log into your system. And as you can see, now the screen of the windows in a virtual environment adapts to the size of your screen. Actually, you can even go completely full screen if you press right Ctrl and F on your keyboard. It looks like a real windows system, but in fact it is windows system in a virtual environment. And if you want, you can access some of the menu here down. You can also exit full screen from here or again by pressing right Ctrl and F on your keyboard. You can also go to the full screen by selecting full screen mode in the view menu. You already can use this system quite productively, but there are still few things I would like to show you. For example, I think you would like to have some shared folder. This folder will be shared between your Windows system and your Linux system. Here you select machine folders and you add a folder here. I usually share my public folder. If you want more security, you can make it read only, so Windows system will not be able to write any files into this folder. But if you need more functionality, you probably would like to keep both read and write access to this folder. You can auto mount this folder and make it permanent. Ok? Usually to see this shared folder in your Windows system you need to restart it. After the restart, open the file manager. And if you go to this PC, you will see public folder in the network locations. To test it, place any file here. For example, let's create a Windows folder. And if I go to my Linux file manager and go to the public folder, you can see Windows folder has appeared here. Similarly, I can create a Linux file here. And if I open Windows test folder, I will see Linux file here. 
This is the way how you can share files between your main system which can be Linux or Mac and the Windows system which is installed in a virtual environment. In addition, I would like also to mention that there are some other handy features. For example, you can enable shared clipboard here. If you copy something in your Windows system, it will be shared with your host system. For example, let's type here test clipboard, select it and copy. And if I go to the clipboard manager in my main system, you will see it has been shared to my main system too. And it also works the other direction. You can also enable drag and drop feature. For example, you can just select a file in your main system and drag and drop it to your Windows system. And you can also make it the other way. This is what I use to run Windows programs in Linux. It is not ideal way to do things because it is still a virtual environment and your Windows will not be as powerful, but from my experience it is better than nothing. Of course, you can use Wine or other emulators, but from my experience very few programs work properly in Wine, but all of them will work correctly in Windows which is installed in VirtualBox. So I hope this video was helpful and I also would like to announce that soon I will make another video where I will show how to install and dual boot Windows and Linux. So if you are interested, subscribe and activate the bell notification. Thank you for watching.